Happy TGIF Friday, Holy Ghost Fire Friday, peace be unto you. And so, all right, so this is from this morning. Wrath of God, faith and obedience is your victory. That's how you obtain your victory. That's how you overcome. There is no other way besides obedience. You must be faithful. There is just no other way. Um, you know if you are or not. Um, it's some things that he has told some of you to do whenever you watch this video that you have not done. Hopefully you don't watch it too late. And so he also gave me, um, this was in a dream, more precious than rubies. This is what he gave me in a dream before. So he took me to Proverbs 31, the uh, virtuous wife. It's amazing how the world take words. Um, I've often saw um, virtuous woman, but it says virtuous wife. There is a difference. And so um, it also speaks on the wisdom. That's that's what it is. You're using wisdom to keep your household together, to be that support system to your husband. And so he had me write wise wife. Um, that's Proverbs 31. If you are interested in reading it, it's the whole chapter. But the rubies, um, the more precious than rubies is 31.10. And that's what he gave me. This was a dream a while ago. Army, uh, Christian army, warlike. Revelations 18, America. That's how he had me write it. That's why I'm going to say it. Uh, because everybody else around the world has been getting it. But us. Um, it just started here. Probably last year. It really increased a lot last year. Um, let's see. Actually, in 2019 is when it really started. But it began to increase. And it will continue to increase. Until we see the king coming in the clouds. Transition. He's, he gave that a lot. Not only transitioning from this place. But transition. The other definition. Often he will give me one word. And it will have several meanings to it. This is the other. Process. Or a period of changing. From one state or condition. To another. And so he is transitioning. Many of you. Some of you are receiving it. And then some of you are rejecting it. It's all a choice y'all. You just want to choose wisely. I always tell my son that whenever he departs from me and goes somewhere else, I, I would always tell him, make wise decisions. Choose wisely. That's what we ought to do. Joy comes in the morning. This is my favorite thing. When he says that, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. That means that night before was rough. <laughs> but thank you, Jesus, anyhow. Um, I am grateful this day. You know, everything has a beginning and an end. When you continue to sit in it, you shouldn't still be sitting in it a long, long time. That's what I used to do back in the day. Use wisdom. Go before the feet of Jesus and ask him what's going on. Why are you still sitting in it? It's usually something within that you're just not receiving what he's saying to you. That you're not speaking it into the spiritual realm. And so, because if you're going through, he has given you the authority to do so. Um, I'm saying in a sense that it's going to change. And so... Let's see. This is something that I saw. It may have been last year, possibly. I believe it was last year. And it, it was a phrase where it says, Lord, exercise your creativity on my behalf. And so I just would write it every day. Um, just different ways to encourage myself in, in the Father. And so also Isaiah 6, chapter 66. That's another one. Please go read it on your own time. Um, he gave again one new moon to another that's what he had me write um this morning and then it had me realize that it's new moon <laughs> so new one new moon to the to another is what he had me write this morning and then he also had me write suddenly uh, restoration and healing this is for some others uh let's see message of salvation love salvation is love what jesus did is love and judgment and wrath uh, that is what he has given me Pointing all back to the feet of Jesus. Uh, judgment on the apostate. Those that have turned away. Uh, let's see. Divine wisdom. That's what he has given myself as well as others. Warlike. 
He gave that to me over and over again. He just keeps reminding me that he has made me warlike and it is for purpose. I can't change and appease other people. I got to be obedient to my father. And that's it. That's what's important to me. Bride of Christ, too close. That's what he gave over and over again, which he confirmed it once again, too close. That's what he gave me yesterday. And then he, he goes on to confirm it over and over again for me so that I am sure so that I don't deviate. And I love that because no matter what you say, you're not going to sway me. Because my, my father said it, that's what it is. Matthew 25, uh, chapter 25, he gave it again. Jesus coming to get his wife. That's what he had me write down. Vision of calamity, he had me write it again. Revelations 19, uh, let's see, 7 through 9. And Revelations 21, 1 and 2. I believe I'm going to have to pull up the other part of Revelations and read those parts specifically for a reason. Um, I will get to that in a minute. Okay. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Ask him. He's coming. He's coming for his wife, his bride, his pure church. And so immediately after tribulation hear me write that again this morning judgment on those who have received the mark of the beast uh, mourning and grief end of the world separate from evil he keeps reminding us to come out from among them you have some of you have some people that are around you you have no clue how wicked they are in their heart and they have a hatred for you and they are hindering you deliberately and so he has me keep saying that for a reason I know from experience until I separated from these people he began to elevate me in the spirit quickly once I separated from them that's why some of you are still hindered and stand in the same spot and still stagnant and not growing because some people you think that love you they don't love you it could be a relative it could be a friend it could be a boyfriend it could be a girlfriend some of you it could be a spouse that you need to let go um, you need to go to feet of Jesus about it. Um, some of you, you got difficult spouses, but he wants you to stay with them because he has calling on their life. And so that's why it's so important to not be unequally yoked. But you got to go at the feet of Jesus and ask him about it for yourself. And so Revelations 14, 14 is the sickle, sickle, wheat and tares. This was a dream he gave me. Um, a man had, had a sickle in his hand and he was taking people out with that sickle. That was a dream. Um. He couldn't mess with me. And so it's amazing how the Lord, he does give you certain things, but he allows you to have, it's going to be relating to scripture. You can't interpret it in the flesh. It has, it's going to be relating to scripture. You got to know what's personally for you. It's just different um, meanings, but only he can tell you. Um, there's a lot of truth mixed with false in this time. He had me write it again. We are to speak the truth and not but the truth. So help you God, so help me God. Because um, mixing truth and false together makes it false, period. Um, God's word is pure. His truth is pure. And that's it. And it's clarity. You're not going to have to guess about nothing with him. If you got to guess and him and haw about it, it's not of God. And so you need to go back at the feet of Jesus and ask him to help you to give you clarity and clear understanding of what he is telling you. He will do it. It is important to pray to the Father for answers. Um, if somebody's going to tell you to pray about something, that's important for all of us to pray for answers from the Father. That's that's what we need to know, and for direction. That's that's what He had me write this morning. Um, this is the most important prayer of all. And then He will tell you how to pray. He will tell you how to go. He will give you the answers that you need. And if you have a relationship with Him and it's something you miss, He'll bring it back. Through another true true believer, not just a somebody that's faking that thing, a true believer. And he will answer you. And it comes many ways. You gotta walk in the spirit to know when it's from from him. Because he does it many ways. Many, many ways. You can not even imagine all the ways that he does it. Um, and it can come from somebody that don't even believe. It can come from a, a false person. It can come any way, but you gotta know in spirit if it is from the Lord, if it applies to you. And for me, I just ask. Uh, let's see. He also had me write again, escape unpleasant situation. God is preserving his people. Many of you are in unpleasant situations. Um, some of you call it something totally different. But we are in the time. We are in the end. Some of you name this thing gain stalking and other things. 
but you have got to speak life over yourself. When you change, not necessarily that the circumstance is going to change, but you change. You know that you got hope. You know that Jesus is going to shut it down. You know that he's going to deal with them. He's dealing with some of them even now. For some, he will preserve to the day of judgment. That you got to know. Um, he also had me write again, Numbers 19, chapter 19. This is speaking on ceremonially clean. That's what it's speaking on. Um, Revelations 19 is what he had me write. Numbers 19 and Revelations 19, the clean bride. And then he had me write the number 19, which is faith. That's the one, the answer he gave this morning for 19 was faith. And so, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58. Please read that on your own time. Okay, let's see. He also gave this morning truth. Short space, Revelations chapter 16, uh, Revelations chapter 20, second coming, second death, lake of fire. That's what he had me write this morning. He also had me write, O death, where is thy sting? This is a scripture that um, my papa in heaven gave my papa on earth um, to read at my, uh, my soldier's service. And so, let's see. Heaven on earth is uh, um, the other thing he gave this morning. Heaven on earth. You know, we're going to see all the kingdom coming out of the clouds. Heaven, you know, it's just the things that he shares, it astonishes you. Like it clicks like this already clicked for me because it says in Revelation that there will only be an open gate between earth and heaven. It's obvious that we're all going to be together. He said he's going to be with us. We're going to dwell with him. We're going to follow him. Get that, y'all. Stop making this um, fairy tale mess up. This is what's keeping some of you from going deeper in him because you don't know what to expect, but you don't know what to expect because you're not asking him what to expect. He's telling it, but you got to make sure that it's true. And so, first fruit. Mary's Supper, he gave that a lot. Uh, let's see. He also gave victory. An evil will slay the wicked. Y'all going to start turning against each other. I don't know why you think you can trust trust an evil, wicked person. That just a, Why would you trust a nefarious one over a believer? That's crazy to me because y'all going to turn against each other. I, he has gave that to me a long time ago that because I asked him like, how can wicked people trust wicked people? Y'all band together against God's people, but y'all going to turn against each other. And so let me move on. It just some things just trips me out. It just tripped me out. And so, okay, only God controls evil. And that's why he kept giving me that over and over again. Because evil will slay the wicked. See, evil think that they can control wickedness, but they can't. Only God. So, get that. It's going to turn against you. And I know some people that it has turned against them. So, they move from place to place, from house in the same city, y'all. They move from house to house to house because the wickedness coming against them. They can't even stay in their own house. How long I told y'all I've been in the same spot dealing with these wicked people? Eight years. Eight years. New beginning, new life. I know that the power of God and I know that the Spirit of God rests upon me. These people moving place to place to place dealing in wickedness and it's tearing them up in their own house and then they got to go move somewhere else. And so, let me see. Jesus is going to annihilate all wickedness, all form of evil, anything you can think of. It will be no more. That's what he had me write this morning. God's original plan of what he intended it to be from the beginning with Adam and Eve before the deception, before the lies, you know, before the disobedience. And so, um, Jesus will be, it will be completely fulfilled when he comes. Complete. That's why he stresses obedience because they were disobedient. In the beginning, Jesus Christ was the first fruit of God and he was obedient unto death. And so we as the first fruit of Jesus Christ must be obedient unto death. And so this is the simple truth. This is the word of God. This Bible, y'all. This Bible. And so unity. You are adopted into the family of God. Nothing is impossible for God. 
When you become adopted in the family of God, you are the same spirit. One God, one faith, one Holy Spirit. You are connected in spirit. You ain't got to worry about going to connect in the building because you are connected in spirit. That's important above all else. As he gave me yesterday, I believe it was, that some of you go to the building and you are not on one accord. You are not connected in the spirit and you go to the same building every Sunday and been going there for years and there is no change. That's over. Natural change. After that is what he gave. Solid faith. Okay. Help. Saved from da danger and distress. That's for some of you others as well. I know that he's saying it to me, but it's for some of you as well. False attack on God's flock. That would be us. The false attack on his flock, he allowed it. It allowed, he allowed it. Testing of our faith. Are you still going to seek me? With all this on your shoulders, you still going to seek me? Okay, let me put your words to action. Faith and obedience, how we overcome and obtain the crown of life. Spiritual sight and understanding. That's important. Don't just have spiritual sight with no understanding. You are leading people astray. You are walking a fine line of false. Yes, you are. You got to have understanding before you run with a word. And you got to make sure that God called you to do that. And so... Enhanced vision. He's doing that for some. He's done that for me. He's doing that for some of you. You will know. You're going to know. You're going to know in spirit. It's going to hit you in your spirit and you want to know. Um, clear, clear discernment. He has cleared my discernment up. He has gave me discernment. I've had it forever, y'all. I realized it when I was eight years old. That's when I realized it. Um, there was a period a season I speak about this that I couldn't sleep in um, the house that my parents bought they remodeled it after they remodeled it they fit they you know I knew why I couldn't sleep in that house but I by the time my papa would go to work I go in a room with my mom and get in a bed but at night I would wake her up every night my son had started to do that to me when he was younger as well and he couldn't sleep and stuff like that and so I encouraged him to do the same as my, my mom did um, Read your scripture. And that's what she told me to do. And that's what I did. I read the scripture. And then I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow. I sure did. And so. But by the time my papa went to work. I was in the bed with her. I sure did. And so. Uh, let's see. Um, mature. He's getting you all to maturity. That's what he's doing. Um, that's what he has done for me. It has been a process. <sighs> Jesus. I, all I can say is thank you, Jesus, this day, over and over again. To discern good and evil, that makes you mature, because that is very important. Um, I have been duped through this process, and I'm, and I'm telling you I have. Um, you must be sensitive to God. Sometimes we won't give you, he won't give you an answer right away. For some people, he'll do that. He won't give you an answer right away, but it's it's giving you more patience it's giving you you know teaching you patience that's why it's not he's not just doing it for no reason it's a training process and so some of you are going and asking other people and they're not always accurate and correct and that's where your issues come into play you got to be able to discern and know if they are of God if that is an answer from him because you're acting out on things that they have said and it's not lining up with him so it gets you out of order you must wait I've had to do this. I've had to wait on answers. I have a one where he would, there was a season that he answered me instantly. And then I went through a season where I had to wait on his answers and I didn't like that season too much. And I started to act out on my own, you know, and it, and it got more messy. And so that's the point of waiting. Okay. And so, there have been times other people have come and asked me about their dream. I always pray and ask the Lord um, what it's about. Sometimes he'll give it to me instantly. And I, I just I just would prefer, like, okay, I'm going to wait. Tell me again. Exactly. So I make sure that I'm giving it to them accurately. I'll wait until I get that confirmation from him. Because I don't want to tell anybody nothing wrong. That's just what he has put in, in me. Um... And so, it's not always instant. Sometimes it's instant and he'll say, tell them now. Um, it's correct, tell them now. Because they may need to know it right then. But at times, he'll make them wait. 
and so I'll wait until he bring it back to my remembrance and then he'll let me know that it's the data let them know of what it was because it was part of your dream or part of a message that I gave you because sometimes people he'll only bring those ones that they have something part of that I've had before and then I know the rest of their answer or vice versa but most of the time he gives me all of it but then he'll give me deeper truths which is, which is a deeper meaning um, this makes some of some people prophesy out of their own heart when you don't wait as well he had me write that um, you don't have anyone's answers God does so for me first and foremost I do recommend you know pray you pray about it and then I'm gonna pray about it too so you have got to always direct people to Jesus Christ that's that's the only sure thing if you're not hearing clearly from him that means you're not at the feet of Jesus it's some things you haven't gave up that's why you're not at the feet of Jesus <sighs> at times he wants them to come to him themselves as a prophet you should know that God trains in these areas <laughs> and he just had me say it already okay heart and hearts keep you from hearing pride makes you what does that say oh pride makes you dull of hearing as well so sometimes you that are calling yourself prophets you're not hearing clearly or you're dull of hearing either your heart has been heartened about some circumstance or situation or you are prideful so you're not hearing clearly and so there are some this is what the father these are some words he gave me this morning that he wants me to say there are some rebuking true prophets of God you have no authority to do so this is what the father has said God will deal severely with you so you better make sure a hundred percent that you are getting it from the father because you are rebuking true prophets and it's going to get you in trouble. And so, um, you are also causing discord among the brethren. This is another thing that the Father said. And your heart is not right with God. This is what he said. And you know who you are. If you see this and you are offended or it pierces your heart, it's for you. And so, some of you are thinking you are saved and headed to hell. This is what the Father said this morning. He wants me to say this. This is the message he gave this morning. We all must repent of all things. Not some, but all. And Jesus must purify you. He must purify all of us. We have gone through the process um, completely by the Spirit of the living God. These are very urgent and serious times. And so, you must get at the feet of Jesus. There's no other way. There's some things he told you to give up and you did not. That's why you are out of order and you are not at the feet of Jesus. Because you have been disobedient. And so, be obedient and get back in line with the true and living God. That's it. Um, another message he gave. <sighs> When I ask for forgiveness, y'all, the Father tells me that I've been forgiven. He tells me that I've been forgiven. Because I ask. And so, you must ask for forgiveness. That's why he keeps saying this over and over again. Make sure 100% sure that you are sure, 100% um, that you have been forgiven. You can't brush things under, under the rug with God. You can't. Um, And when you do, he is faithful to forgive us. He knows it all anyway. That's the whole point of repenting of it and giving it to him. If he's bringing those thoughts to you, it's to repent of it and give it to him. That's it. And then he's faithful to forgive you. We must ask for forgiveness and turn away from the sin. Uh, let's see. We all must continue to transform to Jesus Christ. All of our, let me see, all of our... All of our completion won't be the same. You can't go by my walk. You got to go by Jesus Christ's walk. Um, he knows where you should be in spirit when he comes. So don't be afraid of this. 
You know, he knows where you should be in spirit when he comes. You should still continue to transform to him continuously. You're not going to do it like somebody else. You got to do it how Jesus did it to the best of your ability, to the best of what he has given you. That's all he asks of us. Um, but you will be complete to him. That's what's important. Not complete to man, but complete to him. Because he knows where you should be. He knows if he gave you a lot of time to do what you needed to do. And you did it. It's not going to be like everybody else. So stay focused on Jesus Christ and that defeat of Jesus. Um, some are refusing to change and remaining the same. This is, this is displeasing to the Father. None of us are never there. That is true. We're never there. Based upon Jesus Christ's walk, not another believer, we are there in spirit. The whole point of it is the Father telling you when you're there. That's the point of it. You got to take what he's giving you and apply it to your life. And he know if you are giving him your best. He knows. And not making excuses. Well, well, we we ain't perfect, and we we this and we that. You speaking that mess over your life, over yourself, and over other people. So he'll take you as far as you surrender to him. As you give up, take up your cross, follow Jesus. Um, he wants me to share this on 8 11 2020. He told me that I was complete, that I had received the mind of Christ, that I was complete. It was a process, y'all. The process started um, from way back when, but it, it got more intense in 2019 is when it became more intense. And then he told me that I would need help with my final stages and that that's when I heard him audible. And so all day long. Whenever I call him, I would call him a hundred times just to make sure he was there. And I did, y'all. I'm just, I know, I did. i just be like, Papa, are you there? That's, I'll say it all day long just to make sure he's still there. And so I'll speak about this in another video. Okay. So he did this, y'all. He wants me to say this. He had to prepare my mind and my heart to reveal to me all the things. That has occurred in my life. I cried a lot during that time. Bitter tears. Because um, such betrayal. And just a lot of wickedness. And so he told me everything that people have ever done to me. And he's still giving little bits and pieces even in this time. But it doesn't affect me the same. It's like in a sense that. I, I, I say soldier. My heart is just soldier in a sense that. Um, it's hardened towards wickedness. I'll say it in that instance. My heart is soft towards my father and heartened towards the nefarious ones. And so, as I stated, I would hate a lot of people. Because I, I knew all this time, but I still walked in forgiveness with them. Even though I felt some kind of way. Like I didn't feel like angry with them. He took that part away from me. He took the bitterness apart away from me after a while. Um... But I just, I still would, when I see them, would see them, I still would smile and receive them and hug or whatever. And so he got me to a place where that's just not me no more at all. And so I, I only receive those that are adopted in the family of Jesus Christ. That's what we are all supposed to do. Um, and that's not to speak on future brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we are to have compassion and love for them enough to tell them the truth okay he calls this for me memory knowledge so whenever he says memory knowledge to me he's bringing something to my remembrance and that's what happened yesterday when I was sharing about another false prophet um, all the things that he has had done and when you speak those things into the spiritual realm he's dealing he dealt then I know because every time I would see them they were like real evil and hateful like they felt like I was doing something but I wasn't doing anything God was tearing you behind them not me I wasn't even thinking about you because I, I don't really I don't think about people like that unless the Lord bring them to my remembrance whether it back in the day it would be to check on them or something like that or um, memory knowledge of something that needs to be um, set straight and restored. Uh, let's see. He'll reveal the entire circumstances surrounding um, only he knew. And so what he did for me, um, testing on my faith, 
in my obedience to him, he had me drive around to different cities. And that's what I did. I drove around to different cities for a while. And then he will have the memories come flooding back to me as well that way. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, that's what wickedness do. They try to block your memory. Um, and they think that you don't know that they're the ones attacking you. But that's how you walk in peace and love with the Father. Because he'll allow it for a certain time. But we're not in a time of peace. We're in a time of war in this season. And so, so the memories came flooding back. And he was giving me things in the dark on others. That's supposed to be a secret. And so I didn't run around, go telling people business and all that. I still didn't do that because he knows that's not that's not something I'll do. But I did begin to warn people um, and let them know who was attacking them. That I did do. Let's see. Some received it. Some did not. And because they didn't quite understand. It wasn't to um, for me. I've never sown uh, discord among the brethren. But I will warn you about the various ones that I will do because that's what he put in me to do. Okay, and so um, part of it I knew on a lot of it. I, I knew part, but he gave me all of it. And so he began to confirm things that I already that he had already shown me and all of that. Okay. And so even to this day, he still will have me ask about someone. And when I ask about them, then he'll give me the rundown on them or who they are. Do they have a heart for him? Yes or no? All that. And so I've been asking about a lot of YouTube prophets and he's been saying quite a few of them are wicked and they got the audacity to sit there and correct somebody else. And you wicked. You're not even of God yourself. You're just trying to look the part on the outside. So that's another one of the reasons he had me to um, bring that up. Um, so he's going to have me get to that right now. OK. All right. And he gave short space over and over and over again. Also, he gave rejection again this morning. He also had me write reprobate. Reprobates are persons um, rejected. Who rejected the gospel. They rejected the gospel. This is a reprobate. Um, to a point that God rejects them. That's what he wanted me to say. Some of you are reprobates. And he has rejected you. This is why it's so important people of God to know to discern and know who you are allowing in your space. You, some of you are um, hanging with reprobates. Um, they know how to fake love just as good as you. They know how to give perfect gifts just as good as you. And so also he had me write abomination. Um, the scriptures with that was Romans 1, whole chapter, chapter 1 of Romans. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 6, Hebrews 6 and 4 through 8. Abomination, he had me write abomination this morning. Without spirit of the living God. That's all he had me write. Without spirit of the living God. Okay. Touched by the divine hand of God. He confirmed that over and over again for me. Um, in the last couple of days. Somebody's doubting it. That's on you. Doubting Thomas. I ain't worried about it. Because I know that's what he did. Um, and so he gave me the song again this morning. Um, he gave me the song this morning. He touched me. And so. Um, some of you. Because you didn't give up things as he instructed you to, that's why you're stagnant. Um, some of us gave up everything for Jesus Christ. And so, because of that, according to the measure of your faith, according to your obedience, that's how you excel in the spirit. And so some of us are in the highest level in the spirit because we gave it up, like he said. He's been having me say certain things like yesterday, Mr. Jason, that gave up the $37 million contract. For God. He gave it up for Jesus. To do the right thing. What God had called him to do. So some of you. You know you. Holding on to these things. On this earth. And you're going to be bankrupt on that day. You can be a preacher. Prophet. Whatever you want to call yourself. God is not playing in this time. And I ain't here to play. I'm going to do what it is my father told me to do. Because I want all he has from me. After this hell on earth. I want everything. All of it. And so. That brings me to, uh, let's see, let me make sure I didn't uh, skip. Okay, so he wants me to share this other experience. I have shared this in previous videos. It's going to be foolishness to those that don't understand spiritual. A lot of what I say may be foolishness to those that walk in the flesh. However, if you walk in the spirit, you know God has done uh, supernatural things for you. 
And so, this is for you. Um, he let me know that he has sealed me completely because during training, my papa removed, he hid my seal. He didn't remove it. He hid it. And I speak on this an instant when um, I speak on in another video. I'm not going to be redundant on the same things over and over again. Okay. And so he's letting me know that he sealed me completely, that he's correct. Because, you know, I asked a million questions that he's not going to remove my um, or hide my seal anymore that my training that's complete and so y'all when i tell you the torment was unbearable but he did it so that i'll have compassion for those that they don't know what's going on with them that's because you ain't doing what god told you to do you're walking in disobedience that's what you're doing you're walking in disobedience you you want that seal you need that seal because things are going to continue to increase when i tell you the torment was unbearable it was unbearable. It made me feel sad for those that um, go through mental torment all of their life. It gave me compassion for them. This is why people are taking their lives. It is unbearable. And, th and that's me saying it as a believer in Christ Jesus. That all, it was only him that strengthened. That I needed the mind of Christ to overcome this thing. That was the whole point of it. And so, um... I can't imagine. My heart was saddened for those that um, do not believe. Because if you believe, you're not going to live in sin. You're going to act that thing out. But when you live in sin, that is unbelief. It is. And so, um, some of you, as well as he has told myself, that he has made us powerful in him. Um, we needed it. We really needed it because um, only he knows how it's been on this earth. It has been something else. And it has increased for us over the years. And so every, it's just like every door was slammed shut. Every hindrance, everything that the enemy could throw your way, it has been thrown your way. But God. And so he also, those that have been a part of that swift destruction for you. Some of you, he's going to reserve to the day. He's going to reserve you for that day. And so, he also gave after that war. And Jesus is turning this world upside down as I speak it. That's what he had me write this morning. This world is upside down. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can help us and save us. And so this is the other part that he wants me to speak on. I should, okay, this is like the last couple pages. I'll be able to get all of this in this one video. False prophets. This is for you. He wants me to say it again. Y'all know I always give the same scripture, but let me um, give the rest of this that he wants me to give today. This is, um, he wants me to go to uh, Revelations 19 first. Revelations 19 and verse 20. And it reads, okay, let me see. Yep. Okay, let me start at verse 19 instead. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Get that. Then the beast was captured. Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. I just got in some ear. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the word and all the birds were filled with their flesh. And so this is for you, false prophets, and those who are marked that are have waged war on God's people. You are already lost. And so um, let me go to Revelation twenty and ten. Okay, and this one reads 
the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever, ever, and ever, 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 ever. So, the Father gave me this before. Father God, the, the Father, God, Father, Son, Father, Holy Ghost, true prophets. Jesus Christ was a true prophet. His testimony is a spirit of prophecy. We are a part of them. So, the enemy mimics the same thing that the Father does. Devil, Father of lies, and more lies, deception, wickedness, the beast, his little one is running around trying to mimic Jesus, can't do nothing with God's people, and false prophets, spirit that's in some of you. God ain't playing with you. We ain't here to play. Okay? We're going to get a truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me, God. And so, all right. Your time is up. This is what the Father gave me to say. He wants me to say this. And I feel him moving in the spirit. Your time is up. Many of you are still trying it. Many of you, God is going to wipe you off the face of this earth. And some of you will be reserved until the day of judgment. But all of you, he is going to throw you into the lake of fire and brimstone for eternity. And I'm going to keep on reminding you, since you want to try and torment God's people and you are out of order, I'm going to keep reminding you what he's going to do to you. And so, what's going on with us is temporary. He's already turned this thing. And so, okay, the final judgment. And so, he wants me to also go to Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 14. Um, specifically, these are the ones he specifically gave me this morning to read. Because some of y'all, y'all ain't getting it. You, you're not getting it. You, you still playing games. And so, please read the whole chapter for yourself, but this is the part he wants me to read. And the Lord said to me, the prophets, prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, whom I did not send, and who say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. By the sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out into the streets of Jerusalem. Because of the famine and the sword, they will have no one to bury them. Them nor their wives, their sons, nor their daughters. For I will pour their wickedness on them. And so, let me make sure that's all he wanted me to read. Okay, that's it. And so, y'all going to keep playing with God? He's showing you. Not you going to see. He's showing you, even now. And so, honorable mention, honorable mention is Jeremiah chapter 23 for you. And so let me go to Jeremiah 29. He wants me to read Jeremiah 29 as well. And I'm going to read some of that. I'm almost getting there. Let's see. Um, this is going to be, let's see, verse 8. Because a lot of you only want to say, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11. These are for captives. You know, people are... Um, Jeremiah's letter to the captives. Um, those that are captive are the ones that are truly trying to see Jesus Christ. You know, um, you're fighting this thing. And so, captive is a person taken prisoner 
And he had me put by lies. This is what the Father had me write this morning. Okay. So Jeremiah chapter eight or 29 and verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in the in your midst, uh oh, okay, who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed, for they for they prophesy falsely. Excuse me. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, and let me see, let me make sure that's, okay, he wants me to keep reading. Okay, I had to read till 2, verse 19. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This still, is applying, this still applies now. When you search him with all your heart, you're going to take up your cross and follow Jesus. You're going to um, give up those things you don't want to give up for Jesus. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Because you have said the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David, concerning all the people who dwell in this city, and concern, concerning your brethren who have not gone out with you into captivity. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send on them the sword, the famine, the pestilence, and will make them like rotten figs that cannot be eaten. They are so bad. And I will pursue them with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence. And I will deliver them to trouble among all kingdoms of the earth to be a curse, an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Because they have not heeded my words, say the Lord, which I sent to them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, neither would you heed, says the Lord. And so... Let me make sure that's what he wants me to stop. Please read the whole chapter for yourself. That's Jeremiah chapter 29. I believe he had me say that yesterday. Um, Jeremiah chapter 29. And uh, Revelation 13, I wrote that again. Let me make sure. Um, I believe I already read that. Okay, I did. Okay. It's time, mighty army, army of God. He has given you divine power. see the persecuted church is the obedient church rise up if you're not obedient then you're not going to be persecuted that's just what it is if you're not being obedient you're not persecuted I know um, people that are walking in obedience that are being persecuted right here and I knew a lot of people at the time and so even some have, have gone on to their reward and so Okay. Okay, he just had me say that. The rise of the new church, truth, true doctrine of God. It should already already have been this way, but some of you are not walking in truth. You're mixing it all up. It's making it false. True soldiers of the cross. This is what he had me write this morning. He wants me to say this. This is for some of you. God has extended life for some of you. As he did for King Hezekiah. This, he had me mention this a while ago. Um, maybe last week. Or whenever I read the song on. Um, Heaven Belongs to You. Speaking about the Alabama girls. That is what she said as well. So he brought her back again this morning. That's for some of you. He has extended your life. Let's see. Some of you are doing your task that God called you to do. 
You just got to be sure of that. Don't don't change just because something sounds good. Stay in the, the calling that he has called you to do. You stay in that because it will put you in disobedience. You don't want to be disobedient. Okay. And so also. He said some are doing their task and some are not doing their task as well. Some of you are not doing the task that he has asked you to do. You have switched it up and you started doing something that you saw somebody else doing. That's not what he called you to do. And I know because I've tried to do that before myself. And it messed up my own ministry back then. Trying to do what I saw other people do at that time. That was a very short season. Let me tell you that. It was a very short season. It lasted probably within that same year. Probably like maybe four months or so. Um, maybe five months tops. Six if I'm, you know, if I'm really in the six. And so... Back to this. Okay. All right. He also wants me to say punishment is in full motion. If you have not repented, repent. For some of you, it's too late. Um, judgment has been set for a minute. And so some of you have just been taking it so lightly. Because the people around you are taking it lightly. They're brushing it off. They're saying they're not believing. They're, they're, they're already deceived. And they're not believing Jesus is coming quickly. And so that's the problem. You're being laxy-daisy, lukewarm, um, compromising like them. You're being corrupt like them. You're being everything but what Jesus said to be. And so he gave Psalms um, chapter 46 again. And of course, the favorite part of that is that he will be exalted among the heathen. He will be exalted among the earth. It starts, be still and know that I am God. He don't need us for nothing. If sometimes if we just be still, he's going to do it for us. And that's what he has taught me. There are times where I had to just sit still and just wait. Okay. Also, he wants me to share that. Um, he let, he did let me know over and over again that uh, that I was completely tested and proved. Um, he just had me keep saying it over and over again. And I'm going to just keep saying it until he tells me to stop saying it. Unity. We all must be on one accord. Acts, Acts chapter 2. He always gives me that one. God is not pleased with the discord among the brethren. Where there is strife, there is every evil work. That's what he gave me this morning. Um. He also gave the video again on failed relationships. Um, he had me write heart. It's your, it's your heart condition. Not everybody else's. It's your heart condition. That's one thing I always looked at my own heart. You know, to ask him if is this is 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 it something that I'm doing that is not working? And he literally just ran, he ran it for me. Just. Man, y'all, I'm telling you, I would hate a lot of people in this time if he had not changed my mind and changed my heart. I'm telling you, if they need a cup of water and he told me to give it to him, I would give it to him. I wouldn't even spit in it. I would give it to him. And so, um, envy, hatred. This was a, a really good video. Um, this is information that he gave. To not help myself only, but help other people. Because some of you are going through these things. You're not going to admit it, but you either have gone through it or you are going through it now. Or you have overcome it. But that's what helps other people. The whole point is to help your brothers and sisters in truth. And so, these are these are some of the things that was mentioned in the video that makes relationships fail. Um, competition, envy, hatred, betrayal, um, constant disagreements. And sometimes it's not the like from the lack of you trying. It's not. It's on them. It's something within them. You can't change them. You can just only be you. And so what? It sometimes it can even be one-sided. That was something else that was in a video. And then also let go. That he has taught me to let go, um, in a proper way, the way he wants me to let go. Cause I used to let everybody go. But some people, um, he may allow a disagreement for you to forgive them and walk in true love with them. That has happened. And so maturity to bring you to maturity as well he allows these things to bring you to maturity so you're able to discern good and evil that's another thing that's tied in with that thing and to teach you love and action that's another thing and so um 
we must love the last thing he had me write was we must love Jesus first not second not third not fourth not fifth number one number one first we must love him first and so above everything I don't care who and what it is we must love him above everything please check out um, Matthew chapter 10 and I read from Luke 10 but in um, I want to say in Matthew 10 it was saying that if you don't if you love mother or whoever um, more than me you are not worthy of me so please check out Matthew chapter 10 um, we must love him above everything else if you put child before him you are not worthy of him that's what Matthew chapter 10 says and he took me to that scripture this morning that's the thought he gave me and so and that's it whatever you love more than Jesus Christ makes you not worthy of him and that's Bible and so that was all that he gave me this morning um, be encouraged to stay people of God I'm telling you be of good courage staying firm in him immovable abounding in his word is in you the word the living word is in you and so you must be steadfast you cannot be tossed to and fro and stand as a soldier you know with courage and bravery and all things that he gives to you strength um, it's not by our strength it's his strength you know his strength is made perfect in our weakness because when we are weak we are strong and so don't allow the enemy to push you back don't don't believe the lies of Satan he can't do nothing with God's people all he can do is bluff that's all he's doing is bluffing and so to those that are that say you believe and you're still living in sin and this is something that the Lord gave me if you are still living in whoredom and not looking towards the kingdom you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna be in trouble release this world because you can be a whore about anything you can be a whore about money you can be a whore in life lust anything it's not wanting to give up that's what I heard the Lord say whoredom and so get your salvation today don't delay any second any minute any hour any day Jesus is coming Jesus is coming and to the nefarious ones I say the same go to hellfire to scorching hellfire the lake of fire Jesus is gonna wipe you out we have no need to worry and we're gonna walk in this thing in spirit and in truth until the next video y'all